If you'd like to learn how to make an elevator that'll move your players up and down to where they need to get to, watch this video and I'll show you exactly how to do it. Welcome to Roblox Snippets. All right, to make our elevator, uh, now there's not a lot of code in this uh, video. However, the steps to building and putting together the elevator are very important. So I would advise you that uh, if you need to, just pause the video and check each step as you go to make sure that uh, you followed each step. So don't skip through the video because if you miss one little piece, there's a chance that it simply won't work the way you expect it to. To begin with, we'll create two parts for our elevator in the workspace. So just go ahead on the Home tab and click on Part. And we're going to change the name of this part to be called the Shaft part. And the other one that we'll add in, uh, we'll add another part just on top at the moment. And we'll call this the Slide part. Okay, so we can move our slide part for a start just out of the way over here and we'll just concentrate on the shaft part to begin with. Alright, uh, we'll just move this over so you can uh, see our properties a little bit better. Alright, now for this particular example we're going to use uh, certain sizes. Now that doesn't mean you can't change the sizes afterwards but for now just stick to what's in the video and then you can make changes afterwards to suit yourself. Okay, So I won't worry too much about changing the properties of uh, the colour and uh, material to save a bit of time but if we come down we're going to change the size of our, our shaft down here to be 2 by 20 by 2. Right, and then we want to just move this up so that it's no longer in the ground. Okay, so as long as it's up above the ground there to begin with, so there's a little bit of a gap, um, that's all good. All right, next, let's uh, staying with the uh, the shaft part here. Come down, and we will change uh, right down, and we'll put can collide on and we'll leave uh, sorry can collide and anchored uh, both on and I'd like you to come up to the part itself right click on it and we're going to click on show orientation indicator all right and you'll notice that we have this little blue circle come up here which shows us which is the front part of our shaft part and we want that um, so just as a point of reference our spawn location here so we want it facing off that way all right, and if I was to click on our spawn location and do the same thing, we want them both to be facing forward. So this one facing forward and this one facing forward. So if yours is not like that, then rotate them so they are both the same. So we both know that we are on the same page. All right, so that's all we'll do with our, our shaft part just at the moment. And we'll come over to our slide part now and come down and we will change its size to be, uh, we'll make it square, so 6 by 0.5 by 6 and um, we'll come down, turn on its orientation indicator as well so it should also be facing forward and we're not going to anchor the part because it needs to move, alright? Uh, can collide can stay where it is and that is all we need to do uh, for those couple of parts to begin with. Right so now that we've got our orientation indicators on we're going to move our slide part so I want you to move it over to uh, next to the, the shaft part here and just so it's roughly in the middle uh, like, like it is here and then we're going to drag it up to near the top of this shaft here all right oops a little bit too high so near the top um, is fine all right it, it uh, if you want to bring it up so it's just level that's okay and I might need to just turn moving very I'll turn this off so that I can just move down just a bit and so it's level with the top something like that all right all right, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to uh, create a 
something called a prismatic constraint. So to create that, we'll select the shaft part over here in the Explorer window, right? And then up above, if you're on the Model tab, so click on the Model tab and come over to Constraints. Now there's a couple of things we need to do before we create the constraint. On the drop down, you'll see that we have these details here, such as Show Welds and Constraint Details. Click on the Constraint Details so that uh, they will show for us. And we probably don't need welds, but you can click on that one as well so that we've got a clear indication of what's going on. So you may need to click on this a couple of times so they're, they're blacked out like this. Then come down to under the Create here on the drop down, and we are looking for the Prismatic Constraint, which is in the list here. So go ahead and click on that, and you'll notice that immediately nothing happens until you move onto the screen with your mouse, and you'll have this little green ball floating around with a yellow arrow on it. Move it over towards the edge. It doesn't have to be right on the edge. So on the shaft part, near the middle, and left click. All right, and then once you've left clicked, you'll see that we get another constraint come up, and just move it straight over onto our slide part, and left click again and we have then created the constraint between this part and this part and you'll notice that the shaft part should have an attachment zero in it and our slide part now has an attachment one now that we have the constraint um, organized for our part I'm just going to move back here a little bit so you can see what's happening I'll just get rid of our screen there all right Okay, so <clears throat> click on the prismatic constraint and we're going to change some properties. So scroll right down the very bottom and we want to change uh, the actuator type and limits enabled. So click on limits enabled and we'll get some numbers to play with here. And then right above limits enabled, come up and click on servo, all right, which gives us uh, the properties that we want to change. Now the first thing you'll notice is uh, this green line that has appeared sticking up in the air here. All right. Now that is the limit, and we're going to um, this. We want this line to be actually running down the other way. So on the attachment uh, in the shaft part, click on it, and then we're going to rotate this. Okay, and we want to rotate it 180 degrees. So turn it till the it drops down. And if we click back on here, you'll now see the green um, constraint. If I just zoom in a little bit and click on it, you'll see the green constraint is now facing down the shaft. So that's what we want. All right. And now next thing that we want to do is come back down to here. And we're going to set the upper limit all right, to be 20. And that green dot now has shot down to the bottom of our shaft because remember we made our shaft 20 studs high. And so that is the very limit that uh, we want our constraint to work at. All right, moving down to the servo, we'll leave the responsiveness as it is, and we'll change our max force to say one with one, two, three, four, five zeros after it. Okay, so a hundred thousand should be plenty. The speed, this will be how quickly um, the uh, the, this lift part will move up and down along the constraint and now the, the target position we're going to um, change this in the script but I'll just show you if I change this to say 10 you'll see that we get a blue line that appears here now this target position which we're going to change in the script is how um, how this force and speed is applied to get to this target position so when it's at the top then we're actually moving down to zero so we change our target to be say two and when we're at the bottom um, we we would change it um, to come back up the top and you'll see that in the script very shortly but they are that is all the changes we need to make to get this working uh, initially now the slide part here needs to be within the limits that we set and uh, we're going to remember we set the upper limit at 20 so what we'll do is we'll move our slide part now um, and just move it down so that it's about halfway or somewhere in the middle of, of our limits. All right. And now we'll create our 
script. So in the shaft part, all right, left click on there and add a script. And it's a fairly sim simple um, script. So we'll just say local shaft equals script.parent and local pris and we'll get the shaft.prismatic constraint and we're going to run this inside of an endless while loop so while uh, while and we'll just say while true do because we're going to have weights inside of here so the first thing we'll do is say uh, pris dot target position will equal 18 so we're within our limits and then we'll say task dot wait for say two seconds and then uh, pris dot target position and we'll move up to say two and then have task dot wait of two right and then this will go uh, around and around so let's try that and see if it works we'll click on file and save and I'll open up our output window here and let's play all right if it all went well and you should have an elevator that is moving up and down very nicely pausing slightly at the top and the bottom and if you jump on it and give it a ride it will take you where you need to go so I hope you enjoyed that video and I look forward to seeing you in future videos if you found this video useful, subscribe now. For more information about my online courses, go to mrbrendanross.com.